This fuel fitting that goes on the back of the head, it's the upper one, it has an orifice inside. It's got a restriction that controls the amount of fuel. And I just decided I wanted to clean that with some brake cleaner and some compressed air. It's kind of small. It's about, I forgot what size it is. For some reason, I'm thinking it might have been 80 thousandths, which is a little over a sixteenth of an inch. There, I got a view of the orifice now. So that's on that end of it. Just something you may want to do is to clean that out while you have it out and apart. Got the block on a moving cart down here. And I'm just putting all the fittings in there. You know how I remember where these fittings go when I never did this motor before? It's been three weeks. This is how I took pictures of everything. Not very good at holding the camera in one hand and trying to do the phone with the other. I'm trying. Those are my fittings on the back of the head for the fuel lines. That one that's on top here is the longer one. That's the one that goes on top. This one has the orifice in it. So the shorter one is underneath it. So I just got to remember the direction that the, well, I don't really have to remember because I got the pictures here. I'm going to put the head on today. Got a bunch of stuff laying up there, some dirty clothes and stuff in a plastic bag to keep it clean and dry while it's sad overnight. So we got the head sitting on a mover's cart rolled out here. We'll pick it up with the excavator in a little bit and put it on first. Got a couple of lineup bolts I got to make. Take a couple of old head bolts and cut the heads off of them and make some lineup bolts. We're putting the head on this morning. And I just got done blowing out all the bolt holes and cleaning the top of the block again. And down inside the cylinders, the top of the pistons, I wiped all of that down again. I think I wiped too much oil out of the cylinders, having to wipe them out several times out of the liners. I'm going to wipe a little bit more oil in them again before we put the gasket on and pick up the head. And another thing, we're going to put these bolts right in here just to make it easier to line the head up just gonna thread them in just three or four threads without the heads they're gonna be shorter so I gotta be able to get them out if I can't get them with my fingers I gotta be able to reach them with pliers if I put them out here on the farther ends they'd be too close to a little wall on the edge of the head this time we got the excavator with a small chain bolted to the back of the bucket so that we have more height to work with than we had taking it off. I'm not going to videotape setting it on other than just showing from this side that we got some uh, bolts in there for that that I think I already showed that. And we just set some pieces of newspaper down on top of the block just in case we have some kind of an issue before we get it set down that uh, we don't damage the gasket. Uh, if, once we're sure everything is right, then we'll just snatch those out of there and, and finish setting it down. I don't have anything to mount the camera on the truck on the excavator. I'm doing this with my hands, so we're just getting a little bits and pieces here. All right. Looking like we got the head seated. Yeah, this end is seated perfect. The camshaft. Our gasket. Everything looks good. We're ready to pull the machine off of it.
you got to be sure you cut those bolts off as long as you possibly can or maybe even weld a little quarter 20 nut on the end of them. That one was the shortest one. This one's a little bit longer. They're not threaded in that far, only four or five turns. I got a blown up picture of my torque sequence and just stick that on the windshield wiper like that. If, the, if it's too windy or raining or something, you just tape it on the inside of the window. Got all the head bolts in there. I'm going to use a 3 8 drive air wrench to snug them down and I'm going to follow the torque sequence and then I'm going to come back out here with the torque wrench and torque them down again the rest of the way with the torque wrench. So the first time around they're not going to be real tight because I'm not going to sit there and hammer on them. That's why I'm not using the half inch drive. I'm using the 3 8 drive so that I don't put them in too tight the first time. You got all those bolts uh, preset with the 3 8 impact. Now we got a torque spec of says 185 to 210 foot pounds so we'll set the torque wrench at 200 200 foot pounds with one hand that's because I got a four foot breaker bar or four foot torque wrench three-quarter drive got a reducer on it and in my socket pretty much no other way to do it I better mention before I forget that uh, when you need extensions on this torque wrench this is a three-quarter inch torque wrench so I'm using the thickest best sized three-quarter inch extension I got before I get down to my reducer that changes it over to half inch drive so that I can uh, have a socket to fit it because if you use a half inch extension and put your reducer up on top your extension is going to absorb it's going to twist like a spring and absorb a lot of that torque and you won't get accurate torque readings I'm ready to put my camshaft in but I've got to line up this thrust hub here and Looking at this cap right here where it screws into, that, that hole is, without measuring it, is about three quarters of an inch above the, the block surface, the head surface. So it needs to be turned right about in that position. But I got to run a bolt through that, and I'm hitting metal here. I got a smaller bolt, 5 16 looks like an old fan bolt from the old cars back in the 60s and 70s. Um, so I got to go up here to where I can find the hole that goes through that gear. Well, I'm finding it right there, there's a hole there, got to be in the middle of that hole because I got to put bolts in from the other side. Well, I'm too high, I'm going to turn it and I'm not going to do it on camera. But I'm going to turn it uh, by the fan until that, where is my camera at? I'm going to turn the fan until this lines up over here and I've got room to get those bolts in here. The book's not telling me to do that, but I don't know what else I can do. So let's try it and see how it works. I got it. I rotated it. Of course, I gotta turn the fan the direction the engine turns because this cam gear rotates counter direction. And uh, when I did that, the, the cam rotated back that way, the cam gear. So we are in a good spot here. I'm ready to put the cam in, I hope. I forgot to show how to put this anaerobic glue on the, the front cap down here that's already on but here it is on this one it just takes a very small amount I probably put twice on there that I need 
but it just takes just a little bit right on the ends to keep the oil pressure from leaking out going outside. I also got another dilemma. I found this little gasket in the used parts that came off the head and I couldn't figure out where it went. There were three of them just like it in the new kit. I believe I just found where it goes. I stuck it right in here and this hole here at the back end. The directions don't say anything about it. And it's just one of those things that came out when things were coming apart and I found it when I was cleaning and didn't know where it came from. So I hope that we're okay putting it there because that's where I'm putting it. And these end studs, they get these new little gaskets on them too. But that's pretty obvious because when you're cleaning everything up, you'll see that's the only place you got gaskets like this. And they go in here. It's supposed to be a special socket for these, but I'm just double nutting them since I can't get a regular socket to go down in there. Well, I can't get the top end of it to go inside of a regular socket. And what I mean by double nutting is since I can't put a socket on that one, I put a wrench on it like that, the round end, the boxed end, put a nut down, we'll put the nut down, then the wrench, whatever, and then I'm going to lock the top nut on there by holding this one and then sticking an impact on the top one to lock it on there, and then that's how I'm going to torque the thing tight. And then I can hold the wrench on here tight and then take the impact and get that top nut back off. One of these nuts goes back here where it is and the other one goes in the same place on the front one. Now for the scariest part. It might be easier than I think. I don't know. But I got to take my tool that I made in the front off of there very carefully and push this, this hub back. It, the doll pin is already started in the camshaft and I got to push that thing back and hopefully my little bolts will line up so I can get the the bolts through there and start it into this uh, this thing here. One bolt goes into this cap and the other one goes into the head. That's going to be the hardest part is making sure all that lines up because it would be so easy to drop a bolt down inside the motor here inside the gear case. I unscrewed this bolt in the center a little ways out and then I started banging on it with my heel of my hand and trying to get this thrust plate make sure it's well seated inside this hole that it goes in. We only got about less than an eighth of an inch space here so it's in there enough that it's not going to fall out of there. Uh, that's important because that's kind of holding the gear in place as well the timing gear. So now I'm going to go on ahead and unscrew this bolt out of there and then take this piece take this piece off and I gotta remount this thing at an angle uh, but I don't have to do that just yet first I gotta bolt the thrust plate into the head somebody might think this is overkill but if you know the trouble you're gonna have if you have a little accident by dropping one of these bolts inside that gear case it's very awkward to get at where they got to go. I just cleaned the heads of them with brake cleaner and I just cleaned this. I got a wobble socket or a wobble extension, 13 millimeter socket. I cleaned all this with brake cleaner. I'm going to tape it all together and I'll show you how I do that when I get it done. Got it done. The trick is to get the tape barely on the shoulder of the bolt, barely on the edge. Where am I? get the tape barely on the edge of the bolt but not under it enough that you're going to pinch the tape between the bolt and where it mounts at enough that you can pull the socket back off of it after you get the bolt started and then you tape it right on up the extension a little bit so that you don't drop the socket in there I noticed that this anaerobic glue that I used that was recommended did not set up after all that time, there, the, there was some of that glue sticking out from underneath the part that I put down and it was still sticky. 
so I went and read the directions on the back of the card should have done that first and it requires an activator to be sprayed on one side first well I didn't know about that it's too late to get it now we got another rainy day coming so I am putting it back together I had to take these pieces back off again and I'm gonna put it back together the front one and the back one the ends for the cam the cam caps so I'm going to just use regular silicone on it. The machine shop guy told me I can do that if I can't find the right anaerobic glue. Just now I got my camshaft bolt tightened up. It calls for 55 foot-pounds on this bolt here, the center bolt, plus a quarter turn. Couldn't get that exactly because I don't have a quarter turn to work with, so I had to guess at that. I'm already starting to take this piece off. It's got a bolt going through the center of it. This is the same tool that, that had the bolt that held the cam gear in place while we were working on the motor. I just put it off to the side at an angle on two different holes. And then this bolt, this bolt right here, goes through into a, a hole on the cam gear and holds it in place to keep it from turning while you uh, tighten down the cam bolt. So I'm taking this rig off of here now. And then go ahead and clean the gasket and I can put my cover on there. Sorry about having to do this in the dark, but there's more rain in the forecast. I've got to get this thing done as soon as possible. The next thing is going to have to be injectors. Put those in and then we'll put the rockers on. Here's my box of injectors all laying in order in a row. Before I put the injectors in, the kit came with new seals. That's self-explanatory how to do that. These are going to be... These little deals right on the end and then of course you got yeah self-explanatory one orange one two black ones and then that little cone thing goes up here got the seals on that one just gonna dunk it in here some diesel Set it down for a second, and I'm going to try to do this on camera. I don't know if I can, but down in the hole there. These little graphite seals don't want to stick on the end of the thing, so if you just take a long Phillips screwdriver and put it on there in the right direction, And put your screwdriver down in the injector hole there. Just feed it right down there to it like that. If you gotta adjust it a little bit, it's okay. And then Get much on video here, but just feed the thing on down there. Make sure your clamp has this little half round washer on there, it's half round on one side, flat on the top. Make sure you got your washer in there. Not that hard to do, all right. All the injectors are in. Now it's time to put the rockers on. Sorry, I got to do this in the dark. It's going to be bad for the video, but I'm just. Time is such a serious issue right now. I just have to get through this thing as soon as possible. Trouble with these rockers is they're top heavy, so when you pick them up, the top side spins around and goes down. So you almost need two people one to help hold them up in place while you position the thing and set it down in there. When you're positioning these you just gotta keep playing with them and, and, and keep your rocker arms on top of the valves and the injectors where they gotta go and because and, they're gonna keep sliding around on you until little by little it starts falling into place like right down where my finger is here that's where this smooth face here fits down in between this this uh, thing here and so and it does it on both sides and so you gotta you gotta do that on all of them 
and just carefully do it and be careful tightening them down just tighten them down slowly on the ends that are up like this one here in the middle the end is up in the front end so I'm going to tighten that one down I can't even get a nut on it yet because I got to put a spacer first so I'll tighten this one down slowly and then start adding that one to it because it's going to be pushing valves down while I'm doing it and I got to be careful I don't put this thing in a bind because if it's in a bind I might accidentally break something if it's not ready to be tightened down yet so just just got to play with it slowly common sense 